My syngonium owl is getting out of control and it needs to be tamed, girl! Hi, I'm Fiona from Feline Jungle and in today's video, we're going to be giving my syngonium owl a makeover together. By the way, I apologize in advance if I sound stuffy, it's allergy season and there's pollen everywhere and cat fur on every surface. Anyways, this syngonium owl is one of those plants where I was able to clearly document the growth from the very beginning. It's really amazing to see the journey of this plant. In September of 2021, I imported this plant from an Indonesian nursery called Chloral Soil. I did a live plant unboxing video where we saw it for the first time, and even though it was shipped from another country as a bare root plant without any soil, it was in excellent condition. No yelling leaves, and it had a great root system. Then just a couple of days later in October of 2021, I made a guide for you on how to treat bare root plants and how to repot them. In this video, the Syngonium Owl was repotted in a self watering pot and in ponds to encourage more growth in the roots. Just a month later, in November of 2021, we did a checkup on this plant in my full winter planter video where I show you my 150 plants. And the roots were already busting out of the bottom of the pot and it was ready to be repotted in soil. In the beginning of this year, January 2022, I repotted this plant in soil with this cute pot by Amy Ceramics. It continued to grow with no signs of stopping and it made an appearance in my imported plants video where I show the before and after of all my imported plants. Then recently in April, I talked about it in my unhappy plant tour video. This was one of those plants that continued to grow during the winter and it even crawled into the neighboring pots. I needed to give it some proper support to keep up with its happy growing habits. This whole time, I've been using my plant care profile as a creative way to record and document the growth of this plant. I like how I can always refer back to my care sheet to reflect back on how I've been caring for it, and it's just been so rewarding to see how far this plant has come along. If you want to use this, I actually have it available for you for free. All you have to do is sign up for my new website at felinejungle.com. You can mark it up as a PDF file, and it's also printable if you want it as a hard copy. If this is something you find useful, then you're going to be so excited about the launch of my plant care journal, which has everything you need to help your plants grow happily in your care. So stay tuned! Just a quick background info on this plant, the Sigonium is a vining plant that grows really quickly. In the wild, it grows so quickly that it takes over tree trunks. I was inspired by the way it grows in its natural habitat, so I decided to mount it on a piece of driftwood. So we put on our jackets and we went to our local aquarium. My aquarium carried two types of different driftwood. The one I'm holding onto now is named Spiderwood. It's a light colored wood that has spidey leg looking branches and it gives a very airy form. Then they had the Malaysian driftwood, which is much darker in color. It's also more dense and bulkier looking. I end up getting a few of each piece just to play around with. These are the three different driftwoods that I got from the aquarium. There are so many different shapes and sizes, but I particularly chose ones with a wider base to create stability for this piece of wood, and also ones that are vertical so that the plants can climb onto it. The one that I'm holding onto right now, it has very thin lines and a very beautiful curve, and those two things combined together makes it very elegant. I feel like plants that will do really nice on this piece of wood are plants that have a thinner stem and more delicate leaves. Whereas I have another one that's completely opposite. This one is a lot bolder visually. It's a lot bolder and more sturdy. And it will definitely be really nice support for any bigger plants like philodendrons or monsteras. It will just create a really good combination with this piece of wood. Now I also got a much tinier one. This one would be really good for a terrarium project that I'm planning on in the future. It just visually has a lot of interesting spaces created in it, like this little pocket of space over here, and also has these holes that I think would be really nice for putting plants into it. So definitely saving this for a future terrarium project. The main focus for today is this plant. This is my Syngonium Albo. It has a very thin stem and nice delicate leaves. So I think this will be perfectly paired 
with this piece of driftwood. I think this plant will definitely give this piece of driftwood some life. I also really like this pot that it's in right now, but it's definitely not big enough if I want to put that piece of driftwood in it. So I'm going to repot this in this terracotta pot that I have already. We're going to be using this terracotta pot for the project that we want to do today. This I got from a plant shop in Harlem. You can actually check out my plant tour video where I visited three plant shops in Harlem. And I think this will be perfect for the project we want to do today because of the wide base. This piece of driftwood and this terracotta pot are made for each other. This has a little piece that sticks out right here and it just creates the perfect tension for this to be stable in this pot without me doing anything to it. We can already get started, but the only problem that we have right now is that this terracotta pot does not have a drainage hole but we can easily fix that by making a drainage hole right now it might sound scary at first but all you're going to need for this part of the project is a drill and a diamond drill bit i like to start off by adding some water on the top of the surface it keeps the dust from flying everywhere when you're drilling and it also seems to make it easier to drill into the terracotta I don't know, maybe it's just me. Then what I like to do is I take the drill and I start drilling at an angle. Then I slowly position the drill perpendicular to the pot. Depending on your strength, this may take more than a minute to get through. For me, I think it took like two minutes. If you want a detailed tutorial, you can check out my step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make a drainage hole. Once you master this, you can buy any pot without worrying whether or not your plants will be over water in it. Isn't that great? Okay, your girl finally made it through the pot and we have a drainage hole. Amazing. Here comes the fun part of styling the plant. I place the driftwood in the pot first. You want to make sure it's securely fastened down. You don't want this piece to lift up and pull out the rest of the plant with it. Because of the form of this specific piece of driftwood, the tension is able to keep this piece anchored into the pot. If you want, you can also hot glue it down too. After doing some research, spiderwood is not rot resistant. I figured since people put it in aquariums, it must be rot resistant, which is not the case. It's just treated and doesn't rot as quickly. In hindsight, I should have painted the base with a layer of polyurethane to seal the wood. If you're planning on trying this project out, I would recommend sealing it before the next step. Then I started to add one inch of soil so that there is room for the roots to grow into. I'm using my well draining soil mix that I made myself. Watch this video next if you're interested. My blog also has all ingredients and benefits listed out. Taking my Syngonium owl, I'm going to gently place it near the base of the piece of driftwood. Once we have the plant positioned into the pot, we're going to add more soil to fill up the rest of the pot. With the base of the plant secured, I can start mounting the plant onto the structure. I have to kind of play around with this part and figure out how I want the plant to look on the driftwood. I need to also take this part slowly because I don't want to snap my plant in the process. I would really hate myself if I did that. I can already see the piece coming together and I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. There's just one problem. The plant was not staying in place no matter how I wrapped it onto the structure. I'll be right back, just getting myself some twine that I have in my toolbox. I'm going to use the twine to wrap it in place. I started by tying a knot at the base and then I just kept wrapping the plant as I go. I had to do this part several times to get the look right. At first, I wrapped it way too much and the twine was very distracting. 
As I'm doing this, I realize it's a very directional piece and what I mean by that is that there's definitely a front and a back view. You are viewing the piece from the front and all the leaves are pointing towards your direction as you guys are viewing it right now. From my point of view, there is no leaves and it kind of looks like the back view. You really get a good look at the driftwood and the mechanics of how I'm wrapping the plant on it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing, it's just something I noticed and maybe I can put some plants in the back here in the future. I'm really enjoying this process of testing and figuring this out. It makes planting fun and exciting again. I can do this as a career. Does anyone want to hire me to style your plants? Just kidding, not really. Finally, I'm getting it to the point where I'm satisfied, so I'm going to tie it back to the knot that I made at the base of the structure. Top it all off, I'm placing perlite on the soil as a way to give it a finished look. The dark color of the soil was really distracting and I didn't like the way it looked. I only have chunky perlite at home, otherwise I would have used decorative rocks. The reason why I don't recommend using perlite for long term use is because I notice that the perlite gets stained by the color of the soil. Eventually the perlite will start to turn yellow. Perlite is also lightweight and will blow off easily if you place it by a window or somewhere with like a huge draft. If you want to replace this set with decorative stone, I will leave an Amazon link in the description below. Just going to pat down the perlite down a bit and I think we're done here. This is the final product. I'm actually really impressed with it. I'm just going to pat myself on the back. I love the way it looks. The combination of the driftwood and the syngonium really works together. It gives a very elegant feel which is what I was going for and it also feels more organic and natural than using a moss pole. There were a few things I had to improvise on compared to what I originally thought I would do. For example, the first thing I did was add perlite on top. Before I did that, the soil was very distracting. It was like this dark mass that just attracted my eyes to look at it instead of the focus of what I want people to look at. So by adding the perlite, I create a more cleaner and more minimal base. And then I can actually focus and appreciate what I did on top instead. Another thing that I did differently was add the twine. So before I thought that I would just wrap the plant around the driftwood and then the natural tension would just keep the plant on the wood. But what happened was that the plant was actually not sticking onto the wood. So by using the twine, I was able to have better control of the plant on how it sits on the wood and how I want it to look visually. So that's something else that I really liked that came out of this whole process. I think that's it for now. And there's definitely more that I can improve on, but I really like how it looks now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also, let me know what plant you want me to put on the sturdier driftwood. I'm just addicted to making these kinds of projects right now. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make another one in the near future. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget my 10 second challenge to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends to help this channel grow. Thank you so much and bye.